Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Dev Talks. Today, we have a very special guest with us, Nicole Yasmin, and she's joining us all the way from Australia, Sydney, Australia. So I want to thank her, first of all, very much for making the time to talk to us about um, her experience with Theta Brain Healing and also Young Living Oils. And I uh, met Nicole a few years ago now when I visited in Australia. And she uh, was actually at the yoga studio. That's where I met her. I went there to teach, I think, at one of the studios there. And she just, you know, I was so like, she's amazing. And her story is amazing. And so the first opportunity I got to have her on this podcast, I took it. So that's today. And I am going to let her introduce herself to you. And then she's going to tell us a little bit about her journey uh, with Theta Brain Healing and then also the Young Living Oils. So, Nicole, thank you so much. Thank you, Deborah, for having me. And I feel very honored and grateful to have this experience to talk more to your listeners around, yeah, a bit about my story and the journey around Theta Healing and how I got into it. So, I'm a Theta Healing instructor and practitioner, and I found Theta Healing through my own journey of healing my health issues. And that's led me on a long journey of teaching courses from around the world, also holding retreats in Bali. And especially here in Australia, I've been, I've had the opportunity to be able to teach around different parts and create a global community of other healers who are awakening to their purpose and helping others to heal and transform their own lives. Um, and I also distribute Young Living Essential Oils, which found me. It's like, you know, when something's just calling you and yeah. you, know, you delve into it and it's like, oh, wow, my life is never the same again. So that's been a part of my journey too. Yeah, that's amazing. Can you tell our listeners a little bit about and even myself, what is the theta of brain healing course and, and what can it do for you? So theta healing is a modality that helps with the involvement of the mind, body and spirit. So it works with that divine energy of creation, which many people may refer to as universal um, but this energy is like more getting to the truth of what unconditional love is and mm-hmm. clearing out the paradigms that we may experience in these earthly realms, you know, around ego and fear and, you know, even group consciousness. It helps people to attune their intuitive and healing abilities, you know. Um, there's many conditions out there that, you know, may say that, you know, you need to rely on a doctor or that it's got to be through medical convention ways of healing but you know I believe that there is an openness to all different modalities of healing and theta healing really encompasses those belief systems of knowing that there are other ways to heal and there's not just one way of healing that's Um, wonderful yeah so what makes it different is a person enters like a theta brainwave and that brainwave has been said to be you know the hypnotic state where we can create and discreate different belief paradigms and instill new belief paradigms that has us serve us in our life in a more empowered way and so you know it is of the understanding and how it got um evolved and how it got created was through a woman by the name of Viana Stiebel and Mm -hmm. she originated from America and so she had her own journey of finding this modality and it's something that she believes many people have been using for eons you know and she had an incomplete radical healing and transformation which then led to many other people and that's how it kind of spread so it's really about you know connecting to that divine energy and clearing out belief systems that may be holding a person back from healing or living their true purpose so for example some people may have the belief that it's hard to heal or healing takes a long time and so we use this technique to uncover what a person is holding in their unconscious mind and clearing out those paradigms so then that way those new beliefs that serve a person can come forward and so it's a yeah it's really really a cool technique is it um is it very similar then to some nlp tools and techniques because i do remember with nlp they talk a lot about the unconscious and they also talk a lot about the what we call the critter brain and then there's the 
you know, the, uh, the prefrontal cortex brain and that these two are disconnected. So basically the critter brain is where we house all these unconscious beliefs because uh, there's a belief, like I think science have proved it now, within the first seven years, we basically pick up all the things that we run with. And then uh, you unconsciously running with that. But like you said, if I have a belief that, oh, I can't heal or, or, or you just struggling with money or you're struggling with the relationship, if there's a belief in the unconscious that you're holding on to, of course, you don't know because it's unconscious to you. Um, but there are some of these tools and techniques that they have in NLP that can then uh, help you to access that part and release. So is it similar? It is similar and the the difference in it is it goes deeper. So mm -hmm. there are four different levels of beliefs. The first one being the core in what you mentioned, everything mm -hmm. that we have experienced from the moment of conception up until the age of seven. Mm -hmm. But then there's the genetic beliefs, right? So things that we have inherited, whether our ancestors believed that life was hard or that you have to work hard for your money, you mm -hmm. know, um, there are those genetic beliefs that go back seven generations. Mm. And so people who may be wanting to lead a successful life or create wealth, then there may be some paradigms or beliefs, you know, in their genetic state that say that, you know, maybe it'll be taken away from me. If I become successful, it'll be taken from me. And these are paradigms that have been around for so long, but some people don't really realize that it's actually come from the genetics. It's mm -hmm. come from this consciousness that has been around for a while. And so the third level of belief systems is a history level, which encompass past lives, you know? So whether past lives exist or not, the truth is everything is happening at once, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we may be picking up past life memories, even through going to a different country and touching the sandstone and feeling a resonance there, you know? There is no denying that some people have that experience of I've been here in another lifetime or even just well, they have deja vu or something, right? Like this happened before. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Deja vu and meeting someone for the first time and being like, it feels I like know you, I've known you since forever. Oh my God. That's like my best. When you meet a complete stranger and it's like, I know you. It's just the love. It's just instantly there. I have that, have done that so many times in my life with people. It's just crazy. Love it. Yeah. And I feel like that is the best way we can really resonate with whether we've had another lifetime before, you know? Yeah. And people have had memories. I've had dreams of feeling very vivid in, in different times and places. So it's, you know, in the history level, there's the past lives, but also group consciousness, right? Mm. Group consciousness being society, a group of people believe something to be true, but it's not. It's not truth. Like mm. you know, everyone who gets COVID is going to die, you know? Like, mm. yes, it, yes. Oh, yes, I know we do it even still now. Every day we're doing it. That's why we have to be very careful, you know, what you read and what you choose to believe because and instinctively i think your body really tells you but we don't listen we're not very good at listening to our bodies mm -hmm. and that's why when you have a practice a big like a yoga practice or meditation practice and you mm -hmm. can still the mind you actually get better at that because your body tells you everything your body is like your navigation tool mm -hmm. like literally you just have to trust it and and listen to it but we don't do that do we like mm -hmm. i remember when i first started t uh, doing yoga like I literally, everything in my life became better because I started to listen, like eating better, sleeping better, choosing better company, choosing better things to do with my life and never regretted it, never looked back 25 years later, right? So the body really does have the capacity to do many things for us, but don't, we don't give it a chance. And on that point where you're talking about, yes, the medical system is there and it can be helpful, but it's not the only way. And sometimes, again, as it may be, Perhaps as a group consciousness, we think, oh, that's the only way that we can be healed. But it isn't because there are so many other healing mod modalities. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's great to know. So the core beliefs, the, gen the genetics, the history, and then the soul the fourth, level. The soul level. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So, so the soul level, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, the soul level is everything your soul has endured, experienced. So when we look at life and let's say we go through a tragedy like a loss, the loss of a loved one, 
Um, it can create this feeling and experience that life is really hard and it can create fractures in the soul. And especially if somebody, you know, I mean, you may have heard going through the dark night of the soul you know, where people experience the real deep heartache, the hardship, the loss of a loved one or a relationship ending. And so we can really take these beliefs down to our soul and experience it as though we're having multiple times of that belief and that feeling. And so many people who, you know, I would say everyone, almost everyone that comes into Theta Healing, they're first doing a lot of healing on their soul because they've gone through the hardships, the loss. Um, and so beliefs like, you know, um, I'm afraid to be alone, things like that can be carried to the soul. I mean, it's there was a study that was done around the greatest fears for humans. And I think one of them was being afraid to be alone because of what can be experienced in that place. So when you're working with Eda Healing, it, you're working on those four different levels and you're, a, you're absolutely opening up the opportunity and the space to be able to create empowered beliefs in the other lifetimes where your soul is, you know, because we're not just here. Like I believe our soul is huge. It's massive. Well, and we're not just a body. We have a body, but we are the soul that has a body. Yes. Correct. Yes. So the soul stuff can also carry, you know, um, the collective consciousness of the sorrow from the land or the anger, you know, when we look at history and what our world has endured, there have been places where there has been war, separation, and sometimes healers, intuitives can wake up and feel like a real deep pain in their heart and they may feel the sorrow of this life and the hardship but they may be taking on or experiencing what's going on around them and so when we do healing around that area you know and the healers and people start to see that hey that's not actually mine it mm. actually is and they feel more lightness in their heart in their chest mm. i often see that actually with trees mm. um yeah because you know there's you can the trees have a life and we can communicate with them and i love trees a lot and uh, i often when i pass them i look at them and i can see sometimes when there's pain in the tree because the trees depending if it's in a big city and there's lots going on it takes on it tries to take on all the negativity right from the from its environment and i just i always have so much gratitude for these trees and then where i live we have a lot of beautiful trees a little bit outside of where the houses are built and I always I can actually still just feel the energy the good energy that comes from those trees that are not they are unharmed by you know people it's a at that so I see that a lot and it's not just with trees it's also in plants it's in everything there's a life right and there's when you when you become connected to yourself then you are connected to everything else and then you start to notice Mm. all these things so the the soul is one right there's only one soul and yeah. so when you are connected to the soul then you are connected to all because there's only oneness but when we are not and i think that's what creates so much um of the sickness and the illness in the world that we see is because people are disconnected to themselves so there's a lot of people that always talk about you know how can we make the world better you really have to ask how can i make myself better because mm. when you make yourself better you heal the world literally <laughs> so it's not the other way around but you know everybody has to have their own experience of that you can maybe tell it to someone you can they can read about it but until you have the experience of that it's just words and so I always invite people to understand that there's only oneness and if you want to see something in the world you have to first ask that of yourself you can ask it outside yes yes I agree with all of that 100 percent. yes so this is so great that you know um with the theta brain healing gives people the opportunity because sometimes we get we feel stuck you know we know that we are not happy we know that we uh we are having pain and suffering but there's some illusion that the pain and suffering is is coming from the outside or the people from the outside is triggering the pain and suffering in us, but we think that they are creating the pain. And so sometimes people don't know how to get out of that because 
there's a belief that you have to use your logical mind to fix everything. And in the meantime, the logical mind has never fixed anything because if it could, it would have by now. So it's a, it's a lost cause. Um, and so it's nice to know that I, I think I don't know that much about theater brain healing, but I would believe that you're actually taking a path that's outside of the logic. Correct. So that you can create the healing that you actually don't know how to do. Is that right? Correct. So what happens is people, we go, we walk people through a meditation, a meditative state. And in this meditation, what's actually happening is they we're connecting them to the, the DMT, right? the ATP, sorry, the ATP energy within our cells. And what and does that stand for? Adenosine triphosphate, okay. which everything and that's the thing we are of the belief that everything is energy and so you are connecting to that pure energy of creation that is within us so mm. the meditation itself may make your logical mind think that you're actually going out of your space and leaving your body but what's actually happening is you're tuning into the natural creative energy within you and that is where the healing happens that's where the magic happens so it's it's coming back to that belief that everything is within you. You have all the answers. You have the divine truth. You have the divine healing. You have the pathways mm-hmm. within you. All you need to do is just take that conscious step to move forward and say, hey, I want to give this a go. I want to try. I want to create something new. I want to yes. create something better for my life, better for myself, because if I do that, then I'm able to create things better for others as well. Yes. And I think, you know, with a lot of people, the real problem is that we don't know that we can so we don't know that we have the power to transform and that we can because the ego mind keeps us so separate from from the true self that it keeps thinking it has to fend itself it has to look out for itself it has to plan for itself it has to devise all those things for itself but that's actually what keeps us in trouble all the time and so when you understand that you can choose like I remember this when I was very young my probably one of my first years when I started meditating (laughs) I went to a a talk that was given by a gentleman which I forget his name now he was an elderly man him and his wife traveled from the U.S. and I was still living in Cape Town that time in South Africa and I went to this talk and the guy he talked about many things but this is what stood out for me and he, he said at the end of it, he, we had a little conversation <laughs> and he, he literally told me, well, if you're not happy with your life, you can change it. I looked at him and I was like, what? Like it never even occurred to me. I used to blame the outside. Oh, it's my job. Or it's my parents. Or it's my boyfriend. It's my country, right? It never dawned on me. I didn't know. So people don't know. So it's real. That's why I do these podcasts with various people that inspire me because I'm going to, I just feel like there might be one or two people that still don't know. And perhaps we can help them to, to know that first of all, it's not that you have to fix anything because the logical mind that's creating the problems is the problem. It's telling you you have a problem and then t- telling you that we can fix it through this, but there is no problem to begin with. So, you know, when we're doing something like the theater brain healing or NLP, or I think even ayahuasca does pretty much similar things because it takes you out of your logical mind. Mm. And there's a, there's a place where you exist beyond that, when you can touch that, when you can access that. And even if you need help through like the plants or through theater, but after some time, you know how to do it by yourself because it's possible we just forgot so the pathways open up right and and you can even do it just having a yoga practice you can do it just having a meditation practice the issue is is just we need to get out of our logical mind because that's where the problems are so it's mm. great that there are all these modalities like you know the theater brain healing and like uh such a such a fan of people like uh, what is the lady's name again that started this Vina Stiebel exactly because she found something that helped her and she's like, I got to share this with the world. And it's like, and I could probably tell you, it wasn't always easy. She probably had like a thousand no's before she started getting yeses. So, you know, I just admire people like that who takes what, what worked for them and brought it to the world. Again, like if you want to heal the world, you have to start with yourself. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, the more, uh, how do people come to do this theater 
brain healing sessions? Is it like, is it a week long course? And I know now it's great because we, it doesn't matter if you're in other countries, you can all get together and do it, right? Because you can do it online. Is that right, Nicole? Right. Yeah, awesome. yeah. So you don't even have to be in the same place. You don't have to be, you know, if you want to try this, I'm going to put all Nicole's details and information at the bottom of this podcast. You can reach out because I don't know anybody else actually that offers this in brain healing. If you feel called, if it resonates with you, um, I believe that it can be helpful. And uh, I just wanted to ask, so how many days and what's the time commitment and so on that people need to put in for this? Yeah. So, I mean, the first way to experience it is to experience the meditation itself, you know, which is free. You can go on YouTube and. Oh, wow. So, Maybe you know, I can put a link. I might put a link, the YouTube link. And if you can send that to me, Nicole, then I'll put it in here and then people can just click on the button. It's easy. Yeah, absolutely. So there are different meditations that you can experience with it, you know, and what we call downloads. So on my YouTube video, I lead you through a meditation and, and we do downloads. So a download is yeah. like being able to receive that positive belief or, you know, affirmation, declaration to be instilled on all the four levels of your being, right? So you're accepting that into your reality. So a download could be, I'm loved. I know what it feels like to be happy, you know, those sorts of things. Um, so it'll get you to open up more of your paradigms to experience that. Um, but if you're someone like, if there's a specific blockage and issue that you want to, you know, um, overcome, yeah. Or if there's something you even just want to create for your life, you know, you can experience a one-on-one -on -one session as well. So to tackle that, or you could even experience the theta healing course, which starts with the basic course. It goes for three days and mm -hmm. usually it goes for seven hours a day, depending. I mean, there are so many beautiful teachers in this world that teach it. So depending where you are and the time zone i mean here in australia the time zone that i teach um is you know it's quite workable for many countries because i've got students in canada um mm -hmm. as well as you know in america too so yeah but there are it usually goes for about seven to eight hours a day mine go for seven hours so that's the best way to kind of you know it first experience it um yeah and there's the book as well you can read the book many people read the book and then that's how they come to the class so, so what's the name of the book theater brain healing it's called theta healing so by Viola Steibel and um the book yeah, itself you can send me that link too then it's like when I you know I like to just put the links in the podcast for people then all they have to do is click so that I would really appreciate that yeah absolutely I'll send it thank yeah. you yeah. And so, and so tell us now a little bit about the oils. It sounds divine. <laughs> so I was this person that, you know, knew about essential oils. My mom used essential oils, but I never really saw the big deal about them. And so, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would go to different, you know, expos and people would be like crowding around all different essential oils and I would smell them like, I don't really get it. And so mm. it wasn't until I met this incredible woman, her name's Joanne Omar, and she said, Nicole, you need to try these essential oils. I go, listen, I'm, I just, I, I don't get the hype. She goes, trust me, Nicole, these are different. I go, okay. And so back in the beginning of 2018, I flew to Melbourne. Her and I were teaching a theta healing class together. Mm -hmm. And she goes, here, smell, the, smell this oil. And she hands me peppermint. And so... Mm -hmm. I smelled the peppermint and as soon as I inhaled that peppermint, I felt an instant connection to God, to creator, to universe, the wow. same feeling I feel when I meditate, which mm. I didn't have with any other oil before. So I was like, there's something different about these oils. And she mm. goes, Nicole, these are the best oils. Trust me. And I go, well, there's something about them. So then I handed it to my, you know, then partner, he's now my husband and he mm. smelled was like wow that smells amazing and so then she gives us this blend called diegize because we had a big meal and she goes here rub some of that on your tummy rubbed it some of my tummy and then within two minutes my husband goes to the bathroom and then i've yeah. got to go to the bathroom and so so it helps I, with the digestion and the elimination helps. process huh yeah, letting go right amazing well I, it feels like this needs maybe its own podcast let's yeah i'm totally down for that totally. yeah i i think that we're gonna do that i think we might have to have a whole 
expanded like you know podcast talk just on the oils nicole maybe we'll look in our diaries and see because you know just to get together for this one we were like we had this book like a month ago just to because people's busy right the diary so yeah i feel like i think there's more to the oils i don't think we can just add it into at the end of this uh this podcast i think let's keep this one with theta brain healing and then we will invite you again on our podcast to talk about these young living oils because it sounds amazing. I have to say, I'm a little bit like you were. Uh, you know, I don't really do oils that much, uh, but I would be interested to know because it feels like there's a deeper experience to be had. And I think that our listeners would uh, would benefit from hearing that. What do you think? Totally agree. Would love to come back. <laughs> Yay. awesome okay great so thank you nicole for this and uh, you are going to send us some links we're going to put all your information at the bottom i really think if if this resonates with you please reach out to nicole and she might even be able to uh, give you some idea of people in your uh, vicinity wherever you are if you can do the time zones and i really think that this is an amazing thing so you know just things to think about is like what are your core beliefs you know, what comes from your genetic inheritance and uh, what's there in your history and then and, and then your soul. Like, I think it's amazing. So we've got lots to digest and, and hopefully uh, people will, you know, try it. Right? Awesome. Thank you so much, Nicole. Um, I appreciate so much that you joined us. I know with the time difference, it's not so easy. And actually for myself too, I had to remember because it's literally the day before here. <laughs> so it's like, okay, remember, she's one day ahead of you, like a few hours, you know? So I remembered that well. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for bringing this healing, you know, into the world and helping for others to heal because like, you know, as it healed you, you just want to share that around. And I really love and appreciate that. And um, we will talk to you very soon again. And we will have a whole podcast around these oils. <laughs> Thank you, beautiful Debbie. I Thank loved... you so much. Thank Love you. you too.